They're quite literally coming for what you already have. You've seen it. They kick the kids out of the school in the high, uh, out of the high school in New York City. They are coming for what you got. But if you document it, you are now the enemy. It's just through the roof. Let what is up? My name is Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. I am back. This, of course, is the epicenter for all of your current and captivating coastal elite chaos. So please hit that subscribe button, like the video, ring the notification bell, leave a comment or two, share this with a friend. Let's go. I absolutely love this clip. We're starting with good news, kind of. No migrants today. Well, that's a lie. There will be some migrants, but we're not starting with migrants. And in this case, um, rap legend, Bay Area legend, Oakland legend, hood legend, Richie Rich, who had a banger, a, a classic, all the way back in the 90s, and several, you know, less popular songs. Uh, he might be most known for dropping one single line on a song that wasn't even his, but it was absolutely amazing. Most Zacks believe that token. Where you from? Oakland, smoking. Friend of Tupac, and I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that we should look to rappers for political advice, but this is a good thing. Um, it's also nice to know that I'm not the only one. You also had Meek Mill, of course, uh, Benny the Butcher. I mean, Kanye West arguably started the whole trend all the way back in 2015 or 2016 when people were getting assaulted for wearing red hats, but that's a different story. You also had Plies, who kind of came out for the establishment, you know, the people smuggling regime. But all that aside, he has recorded a video, or I guess it's more like audio, because you can't even see him, but he is um, quite as, as authentically as you possibly can, I believe, uh, venting about what's happening in California. Right here, yeah, I don't even need you to see me with this shit I'm finna be talking, but I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah, people hitting my line, talking about, man, where you going, where you going? Out of California, the fuck out of California? Yeah, California is on its way down the drain. You hear me? Yeah, your local legislators, your motherfucking state legislation, they selling this motherfucker dirt cheap. You understand me? Yeah, they giving immigrants benefits. You hear me? They giving checks to homeless people, bro. I'm not against immigrants. I'm not against homeless people. But they not giving me no motherfucking checks. The schools is fucked up. They not teaching the kids nothing. They not paying the teachers to teach the kids nothing. Yeah, your, my favorite restaurant, La Chevelle, out of here. My favorite football team, the Oak Raiders, out of here. Favorite basketball team, Warriors, out of here. Favorite baseball team, A's, out of here. Yeah, man, everybody is getting the fuck out of California, me included. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, around here, the cost of living is going up and the chances of living are going down. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, how about that? Yeah, California, the people who legislate for us don't live here. They selling this motherfucker out. All the homeless people you see in these Scooby and the Ghost Chaser motorhomes parked everywhere, they not even from here. But it's so much free money going on. Yeah, free money, food stamps, all the shit. Yeah, California is over with, baby. You understand me? Yeah, you heard it from me. Fuck California. Hug the loved ones, kiss the babies. So I think that's good news, right? I mean, he's very angry, but these are things that we need to talk about. So on the plus side, it is happening. People are starting to see through it. But on the downside, the machine is going to roll on. And um, he also made a follow up video because I guess he didn't realize it was going to be quite as big and make the news like it did. And he doubled down. Right. And, and what what's really great about this is when you have these type of guys, these old school guys, they're not going to be bullied. Right. Like, you know, maybe some weird old college kids, they can, you know, they hide in the corner and, and they apologize and all that type of stuff. But we're at the point now where these guys Everybody can see it and nobody's going to apologize. And shout out this top comment here who says Lake Merritt is moving to Las Vegas too. That's pretty funny. And I love that he actually mentions by name a restaurant I used to go to growing up. And it is one of the many businesses that have since, that have since left Oakland, right? And he talks about California. I think he's sort of conflating it with, with Oakland. The point remains the same. 
And because we cannot leave Los Angeles out of this conversation, and I'm sure there's great pockets of Oakland or great pockets of San Francisco and great pockets of farmland in between, I suppose, but it's very clear that the cities have been destroyed by the political regime. And this guy, he's a comedian. He makes it pretty funny, but he, I, I think he's onto something as well. Thinking about moving to Los Angeles? Do not do it. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Want to see what $500,000 gets you in LA? Nope, 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 nope. Because they all cost over $700,000. You have to be rich just to be poor out here. Speaking of poor. Like, why do I have to walk in the middle of the street? Because they got tents out here. Yeah, okay. So it goes on like that. And some people are just completely oblivious. Like this guy uh, in the comments here, I guess, is trying to be... Um, you know, insightful. People love to just go online and complain while doing nothing to change it. But are we really to believe that the same political regime that shut down businesses, destroyed lives and forced pharmaceuticals on people are just going to allow themselves to, I don't know, be outvoted and they're going to go back to the drawing board and come up with some better ideas that people actually like? It's not going to happen. It's too late. Their claws are dug in. Their heels are dug in. They're not going to say, oh, maybe we went a little bit too hard on that. We're going to go back and fix it. That ship has sailed. They're bleeding California dry for their own personal benefit. And only a day or so after those two videos were posted, in and out you know, legendary California burger chain is closing or will be closing soon. Their only Oakland location due to crime they say we have made the decision to close our in and out burger location in oakland california due to ongoing issues with crime despite taking repeated steps to create safer conditions our customers and associates are regularly victimized by car break-ins property damage theft armed robberies our last days uh, our last day of business in oakland will be sunday march 24th 2024 so maybe that's something that will be worth checking out but imagine just being a burger chain right outside the coliseum where you should where business should be booming but all of the sports teams the golden state warriors i mean they only went to san francisco which isn't much better but they're gone oakland a's are gone oakland raiders are gone the only people left in this complex i believe are Panda Express and Wingstop, but their days are numbered too because Walmart and Home Depot already left that very same complex. Right across the bay in San Francisco, Stowe Lake in Golden Gate Park renamed Blue Heron Lake. And they renamed this lake because they claimed that the guy it was originally named after was an anti-Semite. But these are the same people who are stopping traffic, demanding their charges get dropped, chanting from the river to the sea. That's not anti-Semitic. But in 1850, there was a guy who they believed to be anti-Semitic. So they changed the name of a lake. So they changed the name of a lake that was named after him. It's insane. I'm triggered. And another one. Controversial stature removed in Bay Area town after years of delay. So they've been trying to get rid of this statue for years, apparently. It was named after some Spanish explorer or whatever. It's not even worth reading. It's all absolute nonsense. And these are the same people who claim, well, you want to ban books and you don't want to teach slavery. You're rewriting history. Meanwhile, they are destroying and renaming everything under the guise of inclusion or anti- Who knows what it is? It's obviously all about power and control among some other things. I don't know, money grab type of things. So while that's all happening, in and out is leaving San Francisco, Oakland. It's all destroyed. The political regime is just having their way. While that's all happening, rare and valuable bonsai trees stolen from Oakland Public Garden. So they are more worried about renaming a lake because some guy from 1850 said something they didn't like. They are removing statues because some Spanish explorer they didn't like was mean. Meanwhile, people are literally stealing trees now. And this is not going to help anybody, right? None of their weirdo rewriting history agendas, that is not going to help anybody. Nobody cares who was offended by that. Who was, 
That was obviously a, a political move. Nobody, what was it, a, a, a weird little chubby white girl, a 21-year-old in college who's saying, oh, I don't like this guy. Who started that? It doesn't make any sense. While crime is through the roof, burger chains are closing, people are stealing trees, and they're renaming lakes. Give me a break. We all see through it, and that's why you got guys like Richie Rich making angry, dark videos about it. And then you have headlines like this from The Atlantic, the age of incoherent partisanship. And I, they're trying to point the finger to the right wing as though they've been blindly pledging allegiance to Republicans or something, which is obviously not true. What, what's happened here is that you've got a default position of people who used to just wear everything that the Democrats would tell them. Like I said a hundred times, those days are over. So they're trying to sugarcoat it right now and pretend like, I mean, the projection is real, quite obviously, but they say the GOP has collapsed as a party. Tom Nichols writes, but voters in general don't seem to care about what parties once represented. Nichols, st Nichols still identifies as a conservative, but no longer sees the Republican Party as a bastion of conservative values. Republicans, quote, have in the course of a decade sublimated from a solid party into a miasmic gas of partisan incoherence um i think it's the other way around but this is what's going to happen every single time they are going to gaslight and project through the roof but it's obviously you and they can tell that their grasp on people their blind allegiance their brainwashed zombie sheeps are starting to snap out of it so they're going to point in the other dire direction and say, well, those, the, the brainwashed Republicans don't. I mean, it, it's it is. It truly is incoherent partisanship. And anybody should be able to look at this and tell it's them. It's from Huffington Post or, or HuffPo now, I guess. Should you try contradating this year? Here's what the experts say. So, of course, they, they love to talk about the experts. There's always an expert. There's an expert on, on everything, and you don't have any right to talk about any of it because you're not an expert and you didn't go to school for it or something like that. But when they say contradating, all they're talking about is dating somebody that you're not used to dating, which is happening, and they're saying this, they're sugarcoating it, but they can tell that people are starting to snap out of it because... The left wing, the establishment shield party, they've gone too far. They overplayed the hand. People are snapping out of it, and there's only a couple people left. So what you have to do is reach across the aisle, and, and even though the people across the aisle are likely normal, sane, rational people, the, the left wing establishment hack shield publications like Huffington Post want to make you believe that you are being a good person for reaching across the aisle and talking to somebody who may have worn a red hat and not, not even not even that bad. No, I, I, I take that all back. You don't have to wear a red hat. All you have to do is say, mm, maybe we should secure the border a little bit, or maybe this inflation is through the roof, or maybe you shouldn't just be giving away free money, buying votes with un, under the guise of eliminating college debt. Why don't you eliminate car, car loans, home loans, mortgages? You, I mean, that's another rabbit hole. But the point remains they're trying to make you think, well, you should just try dating someone else. It's like, well, the wells run dry. There's nobody left. Like in California, the entire state should really just be politicians stealing from each other at this point because we all see through it. Then, of course, I, I, I wouldn't be myself. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the migrants at least once or maybe twice. But from the New York Post, New York City neighborhood turned into giant toilet as migrants litter park with poop leave cups of urine on doorsteps. But I guess that's a that's a right-wing thing now, right? So it, it's all over, and that's why they're talking about incoherent partisanship and, and contradating, because we can all see it now. So they want you to know that you're not a bad person for, for getting outside of that now. And this is just crazy from AZ Central. They say, threats rise after Phoenix migrant shelter targeted online by right-wing activists. So they're talking about a James O'Keefe report and threat. Bro, are you, are you serious? Right. We can see story after story after story of fights and complaints. Oh, they're so cold and they want to they want to get the, the welfare and they're stabbing each other and they're lying about it. That's a, a different story. It's a deep rabbit hole could do, you know, hours on what's actually happening in New York. Right. I mean, 
I myself was kicked out of trying to get into a migrant shelter because I didn't belong there. ID? No, was. You got your, no, I'm talking to someone. You got your ID? No, no, I don't have my All ID. Right, this, is a, this, is a, um, this is a shelter. You need to have an oh, ID. Oh, you can't record in here, please. Why not? You can't record in here. Why? You're not allowed you to record in here. He's recording. You cannot record in here. What are you doing? You cannot yeah. record in here, brother. Please go. Why? You have to get out. Why not? You don't belong in here. What? Why? Please get out. So who belongs in here? Not you. <laughs> Can you just talk to me? Why are you? Why are you so angry? Why are you so mad, bro? Which, if you took a fraction of that very same energy to the border, we wouldn't be in that in this mess. But of course, they want this, right? I mean, this is not by mistake. Obviously, this is not incompetence. This is controlled demise, uh, con controlled destruction to. Help somebody, I don't know who it is, Bo Jiden, he doesn't know what's going on. Kamal Tell Harris, nobody knows what's happening. I could just go the route of saying this is a Soros Open Society Foundation operation, but that would be conspiratorial. And now AZ Central is mad because because they get mad. And I've said this before, you can't document this stuff, right? You, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to harass, you don't have to target, you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is show up with an iPhone and then they say, oh, well, how dare you? It's like, bro. You guys are swimming through the river, hopping over the fence, crawling under barbed wire, but you're being targeted? No, you're targeting us. They're quite literally coming for what you already have. You've seen it. They kicked the kids out of the school, in the high, uh, out of the high school in New York City. They are coming for what you got, but if you document it, you are now the enemy. It's just through the roof. I'm triggered. Let's take a look at another one of these slides. Yeah, the Welcome Center in Phoenix, which provides temporary shelter to asylum seekers released by federal immigration authorities, has been targeted in an online video by far right activists known for posting hidden camera stings. So all they said all that to say uh, a journalist got in here and started exposing us, which I said a long time ago, and maybe he knows about this. Or maybe they've taken it down by now, but I did a whole, you know, segment about the desperate Craigslist ad because they're looking for people to work in the migrant shelter for a fraction of the money that it costs to actually live in New York. But that's a different story. They say the video was posted on January 3rd on X, formerly Twitter, by James O'Keefe, the ex-CEO of the right-wing organization Project Veritas. So look, this is all incoherent rambling. And for good measure... While the border is wide open and you are the enemy, if you even dare to document that, there's still fear-mongering Rona, or in this case, long COVID. From now this news, a man with a mask is screaming, is screaming about how scary long COVID is, which, if you truly believed that, you would obviously opt for a closed border, but this is not about making sense. I keep trying my hardest to make sense out of this, but... It's impossible. The burden of long COVID, the burden of disease and this. The burden that doesn't even mean anything. The burden of long COVID is on par with cancer and heart disease. They say in the in the caption, the burden that doesn't mean anything. So <laughs> again, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize if you truly believed this, you would not be on board with an open border. Now, maybe this guy is not on board with an open border, but I'd venture to say he is because it's not about making sense. It's about making sure that you obey. So in 2024, this going, this guy is going out there with a mask on his face, talking about all oh, the burden. What are you talking about, bro? Ability from long COVID, when you measure it, is on par with the burden of cancer and heart disease. And even if people emerge unscathed, after having the first infection, they can still get long COVID after reinfection. And I don't think enough people really know. Wait, wait, so, oh, oh, the burden, the burden of long COVID is the same as cancer. And even if you get Rona and don't have a problem with it, you could get it again and then die. But also, we should certainly be making sure that the border is wide open. In fact, you should let them stay at your house. I mean, 
you know this fact and or know about this. Well, the best way to prevent long COVID is to prevent COVID in the first place. There is actually no long COVID without COVID. Meanwhile, migrants are bringing in measles and all sorts of disgusting stuff. But this guy in his mask in 2024, four years removed, nearly four years removed. No, I guess actually exactly four years removed from the initial bat soup virus. This man wants you to think that long COVID is scary now. I mean, these people and as long as you want to ignore the migrants and, and I'm saying migrants like that's I mean, that's their term. I mean, these people are literally criminals. But anyways, if you want to ignore all that and you want to fear monger Rona, but then you want to go over to the World Economic Forum, you know, <laughs> this clip from Matt Walsh, where he says a few years ago, the elites were telling us to wear a mask and say six feet apart. Now they're bringing in a native woman to cough directly in their faces. And as we know by now, the glaring hypocrisy, all of the contradictions that is that is built to drive you crazy and built to make sure that you obey. But it's over. And to bring it full circle is even though it doesn't sound related, this is why you got guys like Richie Rich, who's probably in his 50s or something by now. You know, shout out to OG. I don't know what he's been up to for these last 20 or 30 years, but I'm following him now. So maybe we'll check back in. But that's not what this is about. My point is that they know it doesn't make any sense. That's why one day they can talk about, oh, we don't know what a woman is, but the next day it's woman, it's a woman's right to choose. The list goes on and on and on, and that could probably deserve its own video. But the hypocrisy is the point. I mean, you get it. This is this is straight out. I mean, this I guess this is real. They want you to believe this because if you do believe this, they know they have control of you. Like if you believe that a man can magically turn into a woman, they know that they have control of you. And as funny as that is, I do want to end this episode with a funny clip unrelated to any of that i saw this clip and i don't know why it made me laugh for like 10 minutes straight i watched it over and over again so here it goes very lee please dm me i found your wallet let's just get into it gary lee brother hey that's my brother's id jerry <laughs> Gary Lee Mom. This is Gary Lee Mom. I will give it to my son. Thank you, dear. Gary Lee Grandma. Ah, oh, you found my little grandma's wallet. Thank you. You guys are crazy. It's Gary Lee One. Identity theft is not a joke. I'm looking for my wallet. I've been looking for it. 